this recording, we're going to take a look at our digestive system chart and some of the digestive structures. Uh, starting up in the oral region, we can see some of the uh, salivary glands under the tongue here, the sublingual gland, under the mandible, submandibular gland, and right in front of the ear, the parotid gland with the parotid duct leading away from it. As I move down a little bit, I can see my larynx, and immediately posterior to that, my pharynx. So that's a little piece of the pharynx. And as I move inferiorly, I can see the esophagus behind the trachea. And then I can see the esophagus here as well. It's opened up so you can see what it looks like inside. And then I see the esophageal hiatus, which is the break in the um, diaphragm for the esophagus to pass through. And next I get my stomach. So this stomach has been partially opened so that we can see uh, the layers of the wall here as well as the stomach structure. So, so if we're doing layers of the wall on the outside, we have the serosa, one, two, three muscular layers our submucosa and then the mucosa would be on the inside. Notice that that stomach is highly folded. Those are the rugae which allow for expansion of that stomach. If we're looking at stomach regions, we have a greater curvature, a lesser curvature, and then internally the fundus is the portion at the top, the cardia, the portion where the esophagus opens, the majority of this is going to be body, and then the narrow portion here right before we move into the first part of our small intestines is called the pylorus. We'll also name two sphincter muscles that help keep the contents of the stomach in the stomach, control the passage of things in or out of the stomach. Uh, right next to the cardiac region we have the cardiac sphincter or the lower esophageal sphincter. And then in the pyloric region, we have the pyloric sphincter, which is controlling the passage of food into the duodenum, the first part of the small intestine. We're going to continue looking at our digestive system chart here, moving into our small intestines. The duodenum being the first part of the small intestine, and then the jejunum and the ileum being the remainder of the small intestine. Now, where we've opened the tubes here, and here I can tell the difference between my jejunum and my ileum based on the number of plique circularis that are present. So plique circularis are the circular folds present within our small intestine and the jejunum has many more of these than the ileum does. There's another example of that we can see it up here. Uh, we have the jejunum open and you can see all those plique circularis within the wall. And then when you look at the ileum above it, you can see significantly fewer of those plique circularis. In fact, while we're looking at that ileum, let's do our layers one more time. So from the outside, serosa, the two muscular layers, longitudinal with the circular layer just under that, the submucosa, and then here folded the mucosa with a nice simple columnar epithelium. All right, returning to our small intestine, I can see the location where my ileum connects here to my cecum, the first part of my large intestine, the beginning of the ascending colon, which would pass posterior to these small intestines up to this bend point. This is called the right colic flexure or hepatic flexure. And there I'm going to go uh, make a 90 degree turn here into the transverse colon, which they've cut open. They've removed the central portion so you can see some of the structures behind it. Over here, 102, I can see the left colic flexure or splenic flexure where I again make a nice 90 degree turn and head down the descending colon. A little tricky to see that descending colon as it's sitting posterior to our small intestines. Here I have an S-shaped sigmoid colon which leads into the rectum and then finally the anus. Uh, we didn't point this one out, so let's come back over here. This is the appendix, and it's attached sort of right near this junction between ileum and the cecum. Other structures that I want you to be familiar with within this large intestine or colon are going to be the pockets, which are called haustra, and then this thick band of smooth muscle, which is one of the tenia coli. Continuing our digestive system chart, we have the liver, we have the pancreas, which consists of a head and then a tail extending over towards the spleen and a pancreatic duct in the center. 
we see the duodenum, and we see here the common bile duct, which is carrying bile from both the liver and the gallbladder into the duodenum. Now the two parts or the two branches that come together to make that common bile duct are going to be the cystic duct leaving the gallbladder and then the hepatic ducts leaving the liver. At the point where they fuse together we get the common bile duct which carries bile down into our duodenum, our small intestine. We can also see those two structures in the center portion of our chart here where the liver has been flipped up. We can see the gallbladder, the cystic duct, the hepatic duct, and then the place where they come together, we have that common bile duct. While we're talking about the liver and the gallbladder, let's go through and name the lobes of this liver. This liver has been flashed upward, so it used to lay down and they've lifted it up like that. We can see the right lobe, we can see the left lobe, although it's been cut here, and then here, next to the gallbladder, we see the quadrate lobe. Now we can't see the caudate lobe because that's located on the posterior side of that liver.